So here's some cases from the field, and we're going to look at them in the light of the prior algorithms that we've discussed. This is a 46-year-old male who had a complaint of fatigue, had some urine irritative symptoms, dipped his urine, found a little blood in the urine. And um, here on his hemogram, we see, uh, although this isn't exactly his, it was very similar, we see um, very nicely marked for us that he has low RBCs, low hemoglobin, low hematocrit. Next, we look at the MCV, and it's low. So it takes us down the road of a microcytic anemia, and we're thinking iron deficiency anemia. Again, remember iron deficiency, not because we don't think he's eating enough green leafy vegetables or red meats, but because um, of loss of his iron stores, probably from some occult source of bleed. Um, a second case that same week, amazing, 13 years of taking CBCs, finding a couple of anemias in females who are menstruating heavily, um, and a couple of other odd cases, but basically two males in their 50s in the same week or in their uh, mid-age that is this guy is 54 had some he was fatigued he had a similar cbc uh, and of course we were thinking gee he did have some you know gertie symptoms but who doesn't um so of course gi is where we first look and this is from that um, guideline from the brits um, as you can tell by the spelling um, iron deficiency anemia, of course, again, I will reiterate a thousand times, it's a little bit of a misnomer. It doesn't mean they're not eating properly, although we do see in toddlers who drink just milk that they will be iron deficient in their diet, um, drinking milk and eating Cheerios. Um, but the, um, the cases of iron deficiency anemia, um, the workup consists of, um, of course, checking serum ferritin. We know it's low, therefore, we go after the source of the bleeding, and in this case, we're looking at GI sources. This protocol uh, asks us to consider celiac serology. I think in his case, where he had a little GERD symptoms, we skipped past that step and went to the upper GI looking um, for a GI bleed. This is an EG and D. Um, the British spell it with an O at the beginning. Um, but celiac is very important because um, of the absorption of iron as well as losing some um, blood with um, um, diarrhea sometimes um, and irritation of the gut. Um, but again, my, my point of showing this is all of these workups have to do basically with the GI tract. And this is where we often suspect occult bleeding to occur from a cancer or from a non-cancer cause. So the rest of the story for these two guys, case one, he did have a cytology sent from the office. The urine cytology was sent in. It was positive, sent over to urology. They scoped him. He had a bladder cancer. Now, we still weren't really convinced, however, that the amount of bleeding uh, from his cancer was depleting his iron stores and creating an iron deficiency anemia. He may well have had also an overlay of anemia of inflammation or anemia of chronic disease because of the cancer in his body. So, um, and he may um, have warranted some additional um, investigations, especially if after treatment of the cancer, the CBC did not um, write itself or correct itself. In case two, um, he did go over to GI for colonoscopy and endoscopy. He was found to have a non-cancerous um, um, irritation of the stomach lining. Uh, I think there was a history of some use of NSAIDs, etc. And, um, you know, uh, so that was um, identified. Um, cancer was ruled out, which was great. But they still both need treatment. In both cases, and in any case where you, you feel that there is a component of iron deficiency in terms of the iron stores, they need to be replaced. So this little um, treatment protocol takes us down through kind of what we do. And in the next slide, I summarize those guidelines for our um, consideration. We're going to go ahead and treat with oral ferrous sulfate, 200 milligrams twice daily, plus or minus vitamin C. So there's not great evidence to say that vitamin C must be given. It is traditionally given and thought to be helpful in the absorption of iron. Um, keep in mind that iron therapy is very constipating, turns the stools green and black, scares the heck out of the patient if you don't warn them, and that they really probably need co-treatment for 
um, constipation um, uh, prophylactics. Um, you know, some stool softener like Coley's, um, bulking agents, certainly dietary changes in terms of lots more water, lots more fiber, and physical activity to help keep the bowel moving. Um, we want to recheck the CBC at three months, as you can guess by the lifespan of RBCs. We're not going to do it much sooner, but we're going to check it every three months thereafter. Some providers do like to go and check a reticulocyte count even sooner than four weeks, a couple weeks, two to three weeks out, as well as um, to see if the bone marrow is kicking up a response. Because that would tell us if we have a fairly straightforward case of iron deficiency anemia, which, by the way, is pretty unusual to be straightforward, especially in older adults. But if we did have that straightforward case, we would want to reassure ourselves that the bone marrow knows how to react when is given iron. And if, if we see a nice prompt response, we're going to feel really good. We continue our treatment for three months after resolution of the H&H &H and keep monitoring the H&H &H over time per the protocol. If the patient doesn't respond to oral therapy or they can't tolerate it, we can give them parenteral treatment in IV or IM. And um, at this point, if I had a case that I thought was fairly straightforward, I didn't get a response, I would definitely send them on for further um, workup and evaluation. And if they're going to need treatment um, to have the um, iron therapy given IV or IM, someone else is going to be doing that. And it, um, so they may have hematology involved and GI involved for consults. A case, a third case here, kind of interesting, a little bit different. A 31-year-old female of African origin, born in Africa, presents to walk in with chief complaint of fatigue, weakness, and dizziness. And of course, you ER people are all going to say, check her pregnancy test uh, first. Um, she was, however, examined to be uh, profoundly anemic with shortness of breath on exertion, uh, rapid thready pulse, and possible cardiac arrhythmia. I would imagine with skin color, it's very hard to look for things like pallor, although um, uh, oral mucosa can be examined. Um, and so, um, so they were... Um, you know, kind of tipped off by these um, vital signs. Look at her CBC. Unbelievable. A hematocrit that is at the low end of the hemoglobin um, range um, and a hemoglobin of 3.4 um, in an older adult wouldn't be compatible with life because as you have read and as you can surmise, people who are older who might have cardiovascular risks already and then become profoundly anemic. Um, the loss of the iron, the uh, oxygen com carrying capacity of those red blood cells, they only have a couple of red blood cells floating around, they're not getting enough oxygen to the myocardium, they're going to infarct um, and, or have at least have ischemia, and angina, etc. They're going to have symptoms, they're going to have claudication, etc. So, um, when a young person like this, however, becomes profoundly anemic, they're able to kind of hang on to their hemostasis because they're young and they have nice vascular tone. They don't have any cardiovascular disease already. Um, they don't have plaque developed. And so they're able to hang on with very low amounts of oxygen being delivered um, to their cells of the body. So here she is, and she also has a little bit low platelet count. Um, which is making us worrisome. But look at her MCV. It's not low. It's high. So she could be an acute bleed. She could be a lot of things um, going on. But she clearly is not a case for um, the um, urgent care. Um, happily, her WBC looks good. Um, so we don't have things worrisome of leukemias, which uh, can be a problem in these um, uh, extreme um, anemias. She was taken uh, the rest of the story with her. She was um, studied. Vitamin B12 and folate were done and found to be low, and she had pernicious anemia. She was transfused. She couldn't just be treated with um, B12 and folate uh, replacement, um, but needed to be transfused urgently as she had life-threatening anemia. I think um, this case is thanks to a student from last year. And last but not least, to um, kind of segue into thinking about um, uh, other um, hemo, uh, 
hematologic disorders. Take a look at this case. This is a 30-year-old female that I had in my practice. She had survived five years um, past um, a diagnosis of Ewing sarcoma and chemotherapy for same. Um, I got her back into my free clinic because after getting treated for the Ewing sarcoma and being declared cured, they bumped her off main care and she became uninsured. Um, she came into the office knowing full well what was probably going to be going on. She had blood on her toothbrush, her gums were bleeding. Took her um, stat CDC, told her to go home and rest and pack a bag, um, send her home with family. Um, I drove the um, blood sample into the hospital and they called me shortly thereafter with this report. So again, panic values all the way down. Let's start first with the RBCs and the CBC. So clearly, um, the um, RBCs were low, hemoglobin's low, hematocrit's low. Um, however, the MCV is a touch high or, or, you know, within range, just a little over range, not low. So um, bleeding, yes, maybe, um, but, you know, not cer certainly not a straightforward case of iron deficiency. Look at her platelets. That's why she was bleeding from the gums. We have no platelets left. Her bone marrow is in trouble, and clearly from her WBCs being grossly elevated, and then these abnormal um, um, findings here, she's in a case, a case of acute leukemia, secondary to the chemotherapy that she received to treat her first cancer. So again, a very dramatic case, um, certainly um, starting with the H&H, &H, yeah, low, not as low as the gal before, but everything else is very different and um, takes us to a, a very different place. So don't forget now to complete the assignment after it's posted. You won't see it till the 10th um, because I want to include information from the student presentation on inheritable causes of anemia. And um, you will have a CBC matching exercise. You can have a couple tries. You can work together. Um, and it will be due by 1016. It's going to count for 25 points of your pretest score for your next lesson. So enjoy.